Okay, so Fred, we've got you ready to go. Yeah. Now, so we've put um, this framework in the roof of your mouth. Mm. We've put four screws up on either side of your, two either side of your, um, two into each maxillary half, either yeah. side of your midline suture. Yeah. yeah, following the one moon's concept. Mm -hmm. So a slightly different design, and I'm bringing in the sort of modified ramper come you vector start head bracing. You've worn that head brace now for a week. Yeah, yeah, so about yeah. a week, yeah. Comfortable? Yeah. Cool, cool. Comfortable. now you've got yeah. the, the right way around. Yeah, yeah. All <laughs> <laughs> the back, the right way up. Yeah. Um, in next Thursday, you're going to see Ian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you'll have some NTR. Mm. So we wanted you to have that frame in place. You wearing the head brace, the headgear well, mm. and comfortable. Mm. so that you could start turning now. So now today's Tuesday, the 14th of Valentine's Day. You're going to wear that neck gear. Mm. The, 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 what are we calling it? We're calling the Mu Vector 2, I think we're going to call it. And you're going to start widening that um, framework yeah. as of today. Okay, yeah. Um, we've taken some good records. We've taken a 3D scan. Mm. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, looking forward to making progress and getting to that point where I suppose we both know we're, we're working, we're heading in the right direction to start making the long-term changes yeah. that this process yeah. is all about. Yeah, um, yeah. well this is, this is what we're aiming for mm. and I think, it's, I think it, it's, it's, it's a pretty good cert that we're going to get some changes. Mm. I mm. mean, you know, nothing can be guaranteed in this world. Mm. Clearly there's lots of risks. We've been through risks, and we've, yeah. you know, it's nothing's without risks. But mm. I think the you've already had <laughs> problems with medicine. I have done, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I totally. Yeah. So you understand risks and things. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So we'll keep a regular blog as we go. Really, mm. now it's just this is ground zero as far as the treatment goes, or this phase of the treatment yeah. goes. Yeah. Right? Totally. Yeah. And we'll see how it goes, mm -hmm. and then report back periodically. Mm. Good. All right. Yeah. Go. And that's the... Oh, then we might as well go straight in. Okay. To the next thing. <coughs> okay. Um, okay, I'm here with Fred. It's... I think it's important to... I, okay, we'll start again, Mr. Okay, so I'm here with Fred, and I'm a firm believer in open science, and the patients having that ability to openly speak their concerns. And Fred, I think you've, you've got a few pent up concerns. Now, I thought you don't mention any names here. Oh, totally, yeah, of course. But I think it, you've, you've had a bit of running. I have done, yeah. I've, I've had um, quite, a, quite a, um, a substantial encounter with the entire ENT profession, I would, I would sort of make my claim to, um, because of some breathing problems. And that was actually what started me down the autotropic routes. Um, you know, I, I think one thing that's overlooked is, is the nasal cavity as a structure, uh, even within the ENT profession. And it didn't take me very long to sort of think, well, hang on a minute, if, if I can't breathe through my nose, is it not just because it's too small? Um, but anyway, I, I, I much to kind of my sort of regrets and apprehension, I, I did pursue the ENT, the ENT route as a surgical option uh, out of desperation. Uh, because you, you couldn't breathe out your nose? At one side, yeah. One side was okay, the other was I couldn't use. Um, and uh, I did develop some in inflammation, but that was, not, that was not the primary cause of my concern. And that was not the reason for seeking ENT help. Um, I was less concerned about inflammation because actually it was never the inflammation that was the problem. It was when the inflammation wasn't there and I was still having difficulty breathing that I thought, well, there's something wrong here. There's something uh, going, uh, going amiss. And I decided to, to, to go ahead with uh, the ENT operation because I thought at the stage that I was in, at least uh, having two nostrils would be uh, useful and might uh, get me closer towards uh, a long-term solution, as it were. Um, 
So I never viewed it as a, at all as a solution to the problem. I viewed it as a, perhaps a step forward, uh, just to give me a bit of a sounding board. Um, but coming away from the operation, actually everything is worse. Um, and I have been uh, in dismay about that and distress. And I've been piecing together through experience and understanding of the nasal anatomy just exactly what's going on and ex exactly how my experience of breathing is in comparison to what it was like before the operation. And I'm encountering a bit of a brick wall when it comes to finding a solution or even any kind of acknowledgement within the ENT field. Um, and I've tried as best as I can to voice my concern about the architecture of my nose and the nasal cavity um, and the function of the turbinates as internal structures with the ENT profession and it seems to in many respects fly over their head that it's possible um, that anything they do can make someone's ability to breathe worse or that actually someone's ability to breathe is dictated by the shape and formation of their upper jaw. Um, and unfortunately what that has meant is that I have been diagnosed as having a constant inflammation because of dust mites allergies um, and my ENT profession always overlooking some quite simple um, architectural problems which I see and, I, and can see on my scan as well. I've had an MRI scan. When um, you pointed this out or mm. you want to discuss this with mm. your ENT surgeon, what was the response? Uh, the response was, uh, he said, no, your nasal cavities are wide open, I can fit a pen down each nostril. Um, now I understand what he's saying, because a pen is a certain number of millimetres in diameter, but you have a structures inside your nose, so your, your nostril is not a hole. It's a very complicated aerodynamic architectural structure, and any deviation from a standardised norm for the human skull is going to cause problems. Um, but you, you couldn't breathe out of it? No, I was having severe difficulty on an ongoing basis. Uh, I would assume if, so, if you had a space so that you could get a pen down, you'd be able to breathe. Well, yes, uh, exactly. And if you have a look at the scan, then of course that's not true because you don't have space like that, it doesn't equate to hmm. open space. You have a structure and then you have uh, millimetres either side around this structure. But actually, the more I begin to understand is that it's the airflow all the way around this structure that generates breathing and generates easy breathing. And so, for me, I could see on my scan areas where the actual internal structure of the nose is completely blocking off part of the nostril. And so there's, there's more, maybe half of the airflow can enter, but it's not going in the right places. And you were able to point this out to your ENT surgeon? I have not as yet been able to. Uh, but you had the scans on you when you saw him? No, I had the scan after I'd had this kind of discussion where I voiced my concern, to which he mentioned this sort of thing about, oh, my cavity's wide open. And uh, he said that, uh, I said I had an elevated pulse rate as a result. Um, because I'm simply not able to get any air in any comfortable measure at any point in the day. And my pulse rate is elevating. I mean, it's extremely high all the time, particularly when I'm doing things like walking or moving around. I cannot sustain comfortable nasal breathing without, without being in distress. And he said that um, that has no bearing on, breathing has no bearing on pulse rates. They've done tests on athletes where they've had a clothing peg over their nose, uh, to which I sort of, thought to myself, well that means that they're mouth breathing and are you effectively advocating mouth breathing whenever you can't breathe through your nose enough, enough which would be all of the time. And that defeats the point of having a nose and using your nose. So uh, at this moment in time I'm pursuing speaking to him um, about my concerns further now that I have the scan and now that I can see exactly what's going on internally. Um, and I'm deeply concerned that there are radiologists who are giving reports on the nasal anatomy um, and I, I feel that radiologists um, with the greatest will in the world are trained to look at black and white lines perhaps rather than to truly understand 
the anatomy and the person they are looking at. And so more the black and white lines and the soft tissues, the hard tissues and the soft tissues, or do you just think they are? Well, I mean, I've got a nose, I've got two turb, you know, I've got, you know, the same number of turbinates as anyone else, and as far as they're concerned, therefore, pathologically, there's nothing wrong. And I think, actually, that's where the, prof the profession is let down, is that there is no, sta no standardised set of uh, rules and models to use, uh, and I think there needs to be more people listening to the patients and understanding that the, you know, the nasal anatomy is incredibly complicated, and small things can be overlooked, which ha are actually enormous. Uh, and that's where I think the profession is let down, in that radiologists and even the ENT consultants, are sadly I feel, do not understand breathing enough. Okay. So let's report back on that mm. once you've shown your scans, your, your EMT surgeon, and just see the response. Mm. Mm. Okay. I often think that the EMT profession, speciality, mm. is similarities with orthodontics. Yeah. First, that they seem to be treating symptomatically without an understanding of the cause, the pathology, or the cure. Mm. But also, they seem to be treating the same patients. They, yeah, they always are, of course, yeah. Yeah, you know, I spent uh, some time working in any ENT department mm. uh, in my orthodontic training, and what I noticed was that the patients sitting outside the consultation rooms, the, the very, very similar anatomy mm. and facial form. Yeah. In fact, most of them were wearing braces, the young ones. Yes, of course, yeah. And um, I had voiced that in... The first time I met this specialist, I voiced that I said to him, I've got a high arch palate, um, would it not be advised to consider some form of orthodontic expansion to help? And he said, no, that, ha that will have no effect. Um, now I understand why he's saying that, because medical science is telling him and telling yeah. us that that's yeah. not going to happen, and that we're adults and that you, you can't expand the nasal cavity and so Let's on and so see. forth. But, um, Firstly, I haven't really got anything else to consider. Medical science has not offered me any kind of solution. And secondly, it had more of an effect than the ENT operation. And I think that alarm bells should be going off and they should be... Uh, you mean the expansion that we did when we, we previously tried, did? Yeah. yeah, because when we took that effect. appliance out, even though it was a minor effect, actually when I took the appliance out, I started to realise that it had effect. had an effect yeah. because I was feeling... The, the plates of the nose moving back into the original position and I was beginning to understand that actually, yes, I mean, it was minor, but it was still more of an effect than the surgery I'd had. Well, let's see if we can get a major effect now. Mm. Yeah, and um, get that nasal breathing um, kicked into touch. Because once you can start breathing, I think you'll find it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Exactly, yeah. I think it's, I think that it's a, you know, sometimes small changes that from variations of form of different people, they have an enormous effect mm and that is all dictated by the position of the upper jaw. Yeah, and then the structure of the upper jaw. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. All right, Fred, well, listen, thank you very much. We'll um, keep this conversation going. Perfect. Yeah.